Hello and welcome to this video of the new CerecDoctors.com Polishing Solution Kits by Brassler USA. In this follow-up to the introductory video released last year, we will go into more detail regarding both the intraoral and extraoral polishing kits. These kits were developed specifically to ensure maximum clinical success using a sequential polishing technique. The extraoral CAD CAM adjustment and polishing system was developed to create an efficient and safe way to adjust contour and polish both glass ceramics and zirconia restorations. It includes both the dialite wheels and featherlight polishers in medium and fine grits to achieve the most natural polish. In the next videos we will show examples of how to effectively polish both anterior and posterior glass ceramic restorations. When milling a ceramic block it is possible the sprue will remain attached to the block. The 6924B250 disc is very effective at removing the restoration from the block. It is recommended that you proceed at very low RPMs when using the disc to protect the restoration. A helpful hint is to stop short of going all the way through the sprue and gently break it off with your fingers. When finishing the sprue, the LD15M grinding stone is used. The epoxy bonded diamond stone keeps heat below 275 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent chipping and microfracturing that can be caused by excessive heat generation. Here you see the sprue being gently removed from the lingual of this restoration with the grinding stone. You must proceed very, very slowly to prevent microfracturing of the restoration. It is also very effective to sharpen the lingual aspect of the incisal edge on interior restorations. The 368023 diamond is very effective at both reshaping occlusal anatomy on posterior restorations and the lingual surface of anterior restorations. Here you can see this diamond reshaping and sharpening the lingual surface of an anterior restoration. When reshaping and contouring the facial aspect of anterior restorations, the important landmarks must be identified. A simple way to do this is to manually draw these landmarks on the restoration. The useful landmarks to identify are the mesial and distal line angles, the cervical height of contour, the incisal one-third, and the developmental depressions. By doing this, the areas of grind zones can be identified to guide you on reshaping and contouring. To identify these landmarks on the restoration, a red pencil is used. First, the line angle and contact points are identified, and the area in between is shaded in where you will grind. Next, the cervical height of contour, the incisal one-third, and the middle lobe are identified. Finally, we draw in the developmental depressions and a final template has been drawn to guide your contouring. The two main diamonds used for contouring and reshaping anterior restorations are the 842R018 and the 863016. The first step of contouring anterior restorations is to remove material in between the line angles and the contact point. This will narrow the restoration and sharpen the line angles. Next, material is removed below the height of contour. This will narrow the emergence from the tissue, preventing a bulky looking restoration. Next, we'll go to the other side and sharpen up the line angle between the line angle drawn and the contact point. The next step is to define the developmental depressions. It is important that you move with irregular movements in this area to prevent obvious ditching of the restoration. Finally, the incisal one-third is narrowed to flatten the incisal one-third and build some natural translucency into the incisal edge. 
Once contouring is complete, the initial finishing and polishing of the line angles and facial areas of reflection is done with the Dialyte R20 MLD Red Wheel. These Dialyte polishers are composed of durable, diamond-impregnated rubber that are ideally suited for polishing ceramic surfaces. These Dialyte wheels are efficient and contain more polisher than conventional wheels due to their diameter and thickness. The medium LD1 dialyte wheel is used to polish the area between the line angles and the contact point. You use it below the height of contour. And then we'll move to the other grind zone area between the line angle and the contact point. It is important to polish the facial surface in an up-to-down fashion to prevent polishing the low depressions and only the areas of the restoration that will reflect light. The ideal RPMs for the medium dialyte polisher is 6,000 RPMs. After initial polishing of the surface with the medium dialyte wheel, Additional anatomy can be added with the 805021 inverted cone diamond. It is important to add additional anatomy after the medium dialyte wheel to prevent initial polishing from removing the anatomy. Anatomy is added often based on what you are trying to match. If the option is available to add anatomy on all teeth, an effective technique is to create both horizontal growth lines and vertical striations to mimic the look of a natural tooth. After anatomy is added, the next step is to use the R20FLD yellow dialyte wheel. This polisher is used for both the areas in between the line angle and contact point and below the height of contour. The LD2 fine dialyte wheel creates an excellent polish in these grind zone areas due to its diameter and thickness. The ideal RPMs for the fine dialyte polisher is 3 to 5,000 RPMs. It is generally recommended that as you go through the polishing steps to dial down the speeds from medium to fine for an optimal aesthetic outcome. After polishing with the LD2 fine dialyte wheel, the facial surface of the anterior restoration is polished with the fine dialyte feather light polisher. This is best for the facial surface polish because it can be adapted optimally to the tooth surface. The LD2 Fine Dialyte Feather Light Polisher is used at a speed of 3 to 6,000 RPMs for optimal aesthetics and again is used in an up and down fashion to only polish the reflective surfaces of the restoration. The final polishing of the anterior restoration is completed with a polishing paste and brush. Brassler Dialyte Paste with a goat hair brush is recommended. The final polish is now complete and a natural aesthetic polish and luster is achieved. When posterior ceramics are milled, often the milling burrs do not provide enough sharp anatomy. To define posterior anatomy, the 805021 inverted cone diamond is ideal. On this posterior molar, the Brassler inverted cone diamond is very effective to sharpen the anatomy, especially the fissures and anatomical grooves. Care must be taken not to deepen the grooves excessively and weaken the restoration. Final definition of anatomy can be achieved with the 863016 pointed Brassler diamond. This is effective in defining the ridges and cuspal areas of the occlusal surface. Here the pointed Brassler diamond is being used to finalize the grooves, ridges, and anatomy of the posterior ceramic restoration. To begin polishing a posterior ceramic restoration, the first step is the LD1 medium dialyte wheel. The LD1 medium dialyte wheel will remove the major burr marks from both the milling and contouring of the crown. It is best used on the axial surfaces and contact points and the high spots on the occlusal surface. Recommended RPMs are between 8 and 10,000 RPMs. After finishing with the LD1 dialyte wheel, the next step is to use the LD1 Medium Dialyte Feather Light Polisher. The LD1 Medium Dialyte Polisher 
will better adapt and polish the deeper areas, grooves, and anatomy of the occlusal surface. Next, the LD2 fine dialyte wheel is used in the similar areas as the medium dialyte wheel, the axial surfaces, contact points, and higher areas of the occlusal surface. Here, the LD2 dialyte wheel is used for final axial polishing and occlusal high spots. The ideal speed is 8 to 10,000 RPMs. Remember, it is recommended to back off speeds when moving to the fine polishers for optimal aesthetic surfaces. The final polish of the occlusal surface is performed with the LD2 Fine Dialyte Featherlight Polisher. This polisher is again used to adapt to the deeper areas of the occlusal surfaces that the dialyte wheels cannot reach. Once this step is complete, the restoration is ready to put in the ceramic furnace for final crystallization or staining and glazing. Moving on to the CAD CAM Intraoral Polishing Kit. This kit includes the dialyte diamonds both in fine and extra fine grits. These diamonds were specifically developed for safe adjustments with no microfractures to the ceramic. The kit also includes both medium and fine dialyte polishers to create a natural polish on areas that need refinement. If any adjustments to the occlusion or contours to a bonded or cement restoration are needed, the dialyte diamonds are used. These are hybrid particle sized diamonds specifically manufactured for adjustment and polishing of ceramic crowns. Here are bonded posterior ceramic crowns on tooth number 14 and 15. After checking occlusion, it is determined that a minor high spot needs adjustment on tooth number 14. Initial adjustment is completed with the 8369DF or 8856DF fine dialyte diamonds. After initial adjustments, the 369DEF or the 856DEF extra fine dialyte diamonds are used to smooth the adjusted areas and reduce polishing time. Recommended speed of both diamonds is 10 to 20,000 RPMs with copious water. After adjustments are complete, polishing is completed with the intraoral dialyte cups and featherlight polishers. Both come in both medium and fine grits. The cups are used on the gingival one-third and the featherlight polishers unique design allows them to adapt to all two surfaces including textured surfaces and occlusion. Here the medium and fine featherlight polishers are used to polish the areas adjusted on the occlusion. When polishing intraorally, little to no water is recommended and a speed of 6,000 RPMs is used for the medium polishers and 4,000 RPMs for the fine. The medium and fine dialyte cups are best used for the cervical one-third of the restorations. Again, a speed of 6,000 RPMs is used for the medium polishers and 4,000 RPMs for the fine. I hope you enjoyed this video on finishing and polishing anterior and posterior restorations with the Brassler Intraoral and Extraoral CAD CAM kits. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Brassler USA or post on SarahDoctors.com. Thank you.